use third-party codes to enhance your apps? What if there was a way to increase privacy and security for apps, SDKs, and users, benefiting the entire Android ecosystem? Hi, I'm Zoe, and I'm a developer relations engineer on the Privacy Sandbox team. In this video, you'll learn how to build an SDK that's compatible with the SDK runtime, covering everything from project setup to defining its public API. The SDK Runtime is a new technology in Android 14 with backward compatibility through Jetpack. It's designed to build trust by isolating third-party code in a secure environment, a sandbox. SDKs running inside the sandbox are called Runtime-enabled SDKs, or RESDKs for short. SDK developers can choose to build a translation SDK to help apps with migration. These SDKs, which are aware of the SDK runtime and interact with it, are called runtime aware, or RA SDKs. The shim, or shim generation tools, help bridge the gap between RA SDKs and apps, or runtime aware SDKs. Finally, RA SDKs are distributed as Android SDK bundles, or ASBs. Before being able to build and test your RA SDK, you'll have to set up the project structure and developer dependencies declare the SDK's public APIs, and connect the entry point. Let's start with the project structure. You'll need two key modules, an ASB module with the metadata to define your RE SDK's bundle, and an RE SDK module containing the SDK logic itself. For easier migration and testing, you can include an RE SDK module, which serves as an API translation layer and a test app module to represent client apps. Next, let's set up your development dependencies. At the project level, add these experimental flags to your Gradle.properties to enable SDK runtime development. In your project level, build a Gradle file, include KSP and the Privacy Sandbox SDK Gradle plugin. It's also a good practice to define your Kotlin and Jetpack library versions here. Within the RESDK module's build.gradle file, use the Privacy Sandbox Gradle plugin. Given a Kotlin requirement for Gradle toolchain support, you might need to specify the source and target compatibility explicitly. And as for the Jetpack libraries, here's an example of how it could look like for your RESDK. Keep in mind that your RESDK can depend on other modules using Gradle dependencies as usual. The ASB module configuration needs a package name that is used to define the RE SDK's public package name, the definition of the SDK provider class, which you don't have to change, and your RE SDK's entry point class, which you'll fill in at the last step of this video. To use the RE SDK, your app or RE SDK should depend on the ASB module, not the RE SDK module. If you're using both, your app will depend on the RA SDK. You're now ready to declare the public APIs of your RA SDK. This is done with annotations, which tell the shim which parts of your runtime-enabled SDK should be accessible. These interfaces must be written in Kotlin. Your SDK's entry point is defined using Privacy Sandbox Service. Every runtime-enabled SDK needs one and only one of these. This interface can directly define functions that the app can call. You can then use Privacy Sandbox Interface to create additional module interfaces if needed. If you need data structures to exchange between the app and the SDK, you can use Privacy Sandbox value to define data classes or enums. Data classes should only contain immutable properties and enums only basic enum constants. Neither of them can contain functions. Keep in mind that for backward compatibility, once you publish a data class or enum, you can't change the structure unless you increment your major version. Finally, you can define callbacks that your SDK can use to communicate back to the app using the Privacy Sandbox callback annotation. These callbacks run on the main thread, and they can help you with things like reporting asynchronous results when you cannot use a suspend function. This is important because functions in these annotated interfaces must be suspendable if they have a return value. 
there are other important limitations to consider when using these annotations. To see all supported types and restrictions, refer to the Jetpack reference for the Shim Tools library. If your SDK needs to present remote UI, like banner ads, or start activities from the runtime process, you'll need to modify your API as follows. To display UI in the app from the runtime, your API should return an implementation of Sandbox UI adapter. This handles the complexities of cross-process UI presentation. To launch activities, your SDK API needs to receive an SDK activity launcher. To learn more about these use cases, watch the episode dedicated to consuming RE SDKs or refer to the SDK developer guide. The final step is connecting the entry point for your RE SDK. Your SDK needs to extend the abstract SDK provider to be compatible with the SDK runtime. The shim generates an SDK provider based on your privacy sandbox service interface. Implement a class that extends this custom SDK provider and override the create method to return an implementation of your privacy sandbox service interface. Then add this provider class to your ASB modules build.gradle file. For example, if your privacy sandbox service interface was called bot SDK, the method will be called create bot SDK. Now, you can use this bot SDK provider class and add it to the ASB module build.gradle to finish the definition of your RE SDK. You can now build and consume this RE SDK. To accelerate your journey, visit the Privacy Sandbox developer site. You'll find code samples, the SDK developer guide, latest announcements, and channels for feedback. Thanks for watching. Watch the other episodes in this video series to learn more about how to build, consume, and test SDKs in the runtime.